All right, everyone, we should be live. Let's make sure that's actually the case over on Rumble, of course. First, I have a brief audio issue here. However, I believe for some odd reason, my computer is attempting to use the uh, Yeti uh, microphone as a speaker system, which doesn't actually work. Okay, there we go. Not that it's not going to be muted anyway, because, you know, it has to be, but I just figured I'd fix that while I had the time. Anyways, we've got a lot of uh, stuff to talk about today. By the way, in chat, please do tell me uh, if we get a Sam Bankman update. Uh, he is being sentenced literally as we speak. That will be breaking news. I'll also cover that in a one-off video probably later uh, afterwards after the live stream. Uh, we are on Sam Bankman sentencing watch. That's uh, important news today. Archived link in the description of that, of course. Uh, that's the latest CNN updates, actually. But uh, yes, uh, please do send me a rant or a super chat or something like that uh, the second that that comes through, because that'll be uh, fairly important breaking news. And uh, we've got to talk about the, uh, oh, the other day, we had one humdinger of a propaganda attack. Twitter, specifically in focus. There were an awfully lot of legacy media pages as of yesterday that simultaneously attacked Twitter. And it's almost like it's a coordinated effort or something like that. And it uh, is countermanded by the actual metrics when you look at them. Uh, the idea that Twitter is, is losing engagement, losing active followers and stuff. Eh, nah, I haven't seen that myself personally. If anything, engagement continues to rise on the platform. I think it's uh, just stink pieces. <clears throat> then we have Javier Malay. After terminating the employment of 50,000 public servants, Javier Malay intends to further terminate contracts for an additional 70,000 government workers. Of course, if you uh, trim a little bit of pork, you know, uh, you can uh, save a lot of money. And uh, that's a good thing for Argentina. He calls it the chainsaw method, but really it's more of a scalpel because that's a drop in the bucket to the bureaucracy in a large nation. Uh, but uh, every little bit counts. We've got the Baltimore mayor talking about uh, white people and how we use the term DEI uh, higher because we don't have the courage to say the N-word. Joy Reid found this highly amusing. She uh, agreed with this uh, wholeheartedly and then proceeded with her own rant, but we won't talk too much about her because she is less relevant than the goddamn mayor of Baltimore in the wake, of course, of the bridge disaster there. RFK Jr. has picked a running mate. It is Nicole Shanahan, a Silicon Valley tech entrepreneur with deep pockets, which means he's in it for the moolah, just saying. But uh, Trump found, finds it hilarious. And then we're going to return to the ever-present debate about the Titanic door. Yes, indeed. I've only seen the movie once. I watched it mainly for the visual effects. There's some violence in there, of course, when the ship is splitting up. I watched it years ago. You remember when uh, the, th the uh, new 3D glasses came out? Um, well, I should probably tell, tell the story when I'm uh, covering the news. I won't tell it now. I'm going to keep you waiting with bated breath. Tigers are my totem, sending $10. Thank you very much. No comment. Mad phase. Loved your John Titor video. Not sure if you're into anime, but you should check out Steins Gate. Yes, that was referenced multiple times, actually, in the comments. John Titor and his butterfly effect is a major plot point, and it's a great story. Yeah, I mean, if you did go back in time successfully, you'd be altering the timeline that you returned to. So things would be different. So perhaps somebody that would have won the lottery and gone on to become the next big entrepreneur or something doesn't win the lottery, simply because you minutely changed the uh, spin of atoms. I like uh, the idea of butterfly effect is pretty cool, actually. Didn't like the movie so much. Interesting plot overall, but... You know, it was all right, I guess. Cheese. Congrats to Senator Joe Lieberman for becoming a good neocon. He was a friend of the war machine and neocons like John McCain. Yes, indeed, Joe Lieberman did die. I didn't bother to uh, cover his death because I think that my opinion about Joe Lieberman is pretty predictable. It's like we've been through this before. It's like when Mitt Romney goes, it's like maybe I'll mention it to tweet or something. Yeah. Liz is asylum seeking bull. Hola, Tarlito, Xi Jinping, Stormy Daniels, China. You gotta say it like that, China. Cat cans, DEI hires are technically pets. Yes, we'll be getting into that. The uh, white nimbius liberals, uh, of course, uh, uh, secretly behind closed doors, they speak a little bit differently about the people that they hire for diversity and inclusion purposes. 
Anyways, uh, first news story of the day, Sam Bankman is indeed right now in court. We're expecting the sentencing to be handed down at any time. And so if I have to break into the other news for that, that will be the big breaking news of the day. He faces, I think it's like, what, up to 50 years in prison? And I would point out, uh, okay, if you did find the funds to do the restitution thing generally, and because everyone knows who he is and he can't really pull off a fraud scheme again because nobody's going to invest with him, maybe it's best to not throw him under the bus. But we're waiting to see, does he get a sweetheart deal? Because he was a big time Dem donor, big time neoliberal, he was supporting all the right people. Or did they throw him under the bus as an example? And just basically they, they knock their pawn off the table and sacrifice him. We're waiting to see which one of those two eventualities occurs. But it will be one of the two. It's, uh, it's, there's not much middle ground here. Either he gets a very short sentence and people might be appalled by that. Or more likely they throw the book at him. That pie over there. I managed to score a free stainless steel barrel at work and I'll be charcoaling in May. How long does it take to produce a batch? Is it a fire hazard? Well, of course, anytime you're lighting things on fire, it's a fire hazard. Um, it takes most of the day. So you do that on your days off or something. And once it's charcoaling down, keep in mind, you can also make wood ash for uh, root crops, especially potatoes. I've got some in the barrel out there right now. About a quarter of a barrel full should probably be enough for the four rows or, or maybe five. I'm not sure now that I have in mind. Clumsy Vash. I'm curious, do you like anime? Uh, some of it. Uh, I'm not a huge anime fan, but I did. I have watched some. I think my favorite series was The Slayers. Mike the Womp, starting to think everyone is pathetically optimistic about Trump winning like in 2020. Deep State will never let that happen again. It's laughable to think they would. Cretans smoking hopium. I disagree. I think in 2020, uh, Trump did have uh, horrendous polling, uh, honestly. Uh, he was never ahead in the aggregate or in any swing state, or only briefly. There were only ever a couple of national polls that ever showed him ahead a point or two. Biden went into the election with a seven-point lead. I had predicted that he would win, and he did, but I didn't predict that he wouldn't take office. Honk, honk, it was perfectly acceptable, 80 million scoops of ice cream. That being said, there's an order of magnitude different uh, difficulty rigging millions of votes as opposed to a few tens of thousands of votes. So I don't know if they can pull it off. They're more likely to try to use lawfare. So we do have, uh, again, we will be uh, paying attention to everything happening with Sam Bankman because that will be breaking news. And so if I have to break into the uh, news reporting, I do apologize. Mr. Kojak, the lady that drowned in the Tesla accident, owned the shipping company that took out the bridge and is somehow related to Bitch McConnell. Weird. Yeah, coincidences happen all the time. Sigilstone, prediction. The case against Bankman Freed will be quietly dropped and swept under the rug after he flees to Israel and disappears. Well, he can't do that. He's in sentencing right now. He's already been found guilty. He is already detained. And a follow-up, the best anime, much better than the rest of that Japanese shit, is Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, God. 40 kids, your hair is looking particularly nice today. Well, thank you very much. So we'll be looking into uh, the Sam Bankman thing, but we've got other news to cover in the meantime. Uh, Doge designer. And, I mean, at first when I saw this, I'm like, okay, you're being hyperbolic, but he's not wrong. Uh, this, this is actually correct. Every media outlet and literally every media outlet of no, is reporting a decline in the use of X, really known as Twitter for most of its users. Here is the key metric data that X released earlier this year. And it talks about uh, the total seconds of usage, the engagement, et cetera, et cetera. It's actually risen uh, considerably year over year for the same period of time, the same quarter, basically, uh, and for the same month. Um, it's, it's on the rise. Uh, Twitter is, is not declining. It's actually expanding. The reason why they did this is because they're afraid of Twitter. They're afraid of Twitter for several reasons. Number one, every time that they fire somebody from a legacy media network, what's the first thing that they do? Oh, well, I want to have my own podcast or something like that. What's one of the main places that they try to go? It's Twitter. Tucker Carlson does his show on Twitter. Don Lemon tried to, but then he said he wanted to be the first broadcaster in space and get a cyber truck and control over everyone else that was allowed on the platform. And so Elon eventually said, OK, well, your demands are unacceptable, so we're ending our partnership. And then now his show has completely flopped because 
and Musk pointed this out, it's literally nothing than more than CNN. So basically he took the legacy network with him. Twitter's gobbling up more and more content creators of note, um, becoming more and more useful. It's branching out. And the other problem that they have is that Elon Musk has infinite disposable income. And so they can't really do much to him. I almost expect them to try to use lawfare or something like, you know, raid his home or something like that and say, oh, you know, he had uh, you know, he had drugs in here. And we, we think that he got a little too much ketamine in him this time. And so we're uh, putting him in jail for a uh, drug usage or something like that. But the real metrics are up sharply, by the way. Uh, we're looking at uh, mobile seconds and total seconds here. Link in the description. Uh, you can look at that for yourself. Does that look like a site that's in decline? No, it looks like a site that's expanding, actually. But uh, all, all at once, virtually every major network, and, and not just legacy media like you know newsprint TV, but uh, also some missing link media, inexplicably, within a few hours, they all release reports on how Twitter is doing so poorly. But their numbers don't even make sense because the numbers aren't real. <laughs> it sounds almost like it was centrally planned and came from the same central source. David Hunter, if World War III were to pop off, how long do you think it would be for it to happen? Also, hell yes to Slayers. Yes, Slayers was a great series. <clears throat> but uh, um, I'm not predicting World War III anytime in the immediate sense. But let's just say that I just ordered new sleeves of potassium iodide and some more NATO filters for the gas mask off of eBay the other night. I'm the square root, Trump Gabbard 24. You're right, Sticks. Yeah, you could do a lot worse than Gabbard. I think that would uh, tick all the boxes. It would also tick the liberals off. Haytham Thabit, hey Sticks, longtime listener. Love your work. Clank, thank you very much. By the way, I had to restore my computer the other day, and now it looks more like a Windows 11, even though I chose not to upgrade. And obviously, then I locked everything down using Registry Editor, because I'm not fucking stupid. So no OneDrive for me, for example. But for some reason, the look of the computer is now more like the other laptop. And uh, I'm trying to figure out ways to ameliorate the situation because it's pissing me the fuck off. So I'll be doing a little bit of tech work tonight. The Nerdwire. Why is Israel the only country not allowed to win a war? Um, there's no winning against a group like Hamas. It'll just regenerate. Uh, that's the whole problem. Cat cans. Hey, Black Bull, eat pant. Hmm. Billy Howard, Trump should apologize for being duped by Fauci et al. Um, let's see. Um, I, I have to choose carefully how I say this. He should apologize for certain medical things that he engaged in um, and admit to the fact that certain medical practices that he proclaimed as good are not good. Um, and all the RFK Jr. votes would come back to him. No, I, I don't think that he needs to do that actually. I disagree with you. Sigil Stone, if only activity on Twitter was in decline. Jesus Christ, the porn bots are fucking ludicrous and the flagging raids are as bad as ever. Hashtag free delusion L's. Yes, um, the other thing is investment scammers. So saying like, oh, I invested with, you know, random username here that has a viral link in the description. And I turned, yeah, it turned my life around and I made $10,000 last month and stuff like that. I think they're worse than the porn bots, actually. Like, at least the porn bots are more obvious. Solar Worship 88. Top five favorite presidents. Opinions on Joe McCarthy. Hmm, let's see. Well, Thomas Jefferson's my favorite, of course. And uh, I like Theodore Roosevelt. I'm sure, I, I know some people disagree because he did lead like the progressive antitrust sort of thing. But he had, unlike Taft, he has hard in the right place. He he was he meant well, I think, genuinely, and actually cared. It's just to use the wrong methodology to approach parts of the problem he did need to address. So Theodore Roosevelt, Washington, of course, because, you know, <laughs> you're the first dude on the job. Uh, you have no fucking clue how to do this, really. Uh, but uh, you still manage to do it. And uh, the nation survives. And let's see, who else? Who would I put as number four and five? I mean, Trump is is on the list of good presidents, but he he's not a he's not a top fiver. He's more of a top tenor, in all honesty. 
Uh, Eisenhower, I would say, yeah, there was some warmongering and some intrigue with Iran, but generally, again, in a post-war environment, he held things together, especially economically, and he was a very efficient individual. And um, hmm, let's see, Monroe, uh, specifically because of the Monroe Doctrine, which the liberals right now are trying to forsake, by the way. As far as Joe McCarthy, he had some good ideas, but he overstretched, left himself vulnerable, and then the uh, socialists managed to nail him because he had overstretched. When you start saying that Burl Lives is a communist, you went a little bit too far. You literally gave your enemies uh, ammo. The original problem, which is commies in Hollywood, commies in government, he was correct. Yes, absolutely. Joe McCarthy was correct about these things. But then he overstretched. He became overzealous, and he left himself open to that kind of criticism. The Rubicon, you don't look like you're in Holland. Hope you're good. Yes, everything is fine. My personal life, of course, is not a topic within politics. Catacans, SPF just got 25 years per CNN. Okay, so we have an update. Apparently, uh, Sam Bankman-Fried sentenced to 25 years in prison. Of course, he can get out in probably 15 years with good behavior, et cetera, et cetera. So it looks like they didn't punish him as hard as they could. And he's a younger dude, too. He's, he's a millennial. So he'll get out. He'll be fine. Lev Polyakov, I want to say Sigil Stone may break my bones, but not sure how to properly end it with, without mentioning Wasted Bonehead. <laughs> Zarathustra, thoughts on P. Diddy fleeing the city? Well, I mean, I would flee too. I mean, if he's innocent, he's going to flee because he knows he's being targeted. And if he's guilty, he wants to flee because he knows he's guilty and he's fucked. Wine Country Stacken sent $5. No comment. Thank you. Hosenkai, thoughts on LBJ? Not a fan of Lyndon Baines Johnson. Although after the presidency, he seemed to be depressed and like grew a beard and shit. And he seemed to be morose about what had happened under his presidency and like regretful over it. So I don't know. Alan Tenez. Windows 95 and XP were the best OS outside of Linux. I will fist fight anyone who disagrees. Just kidding, just kidding. I liked Windows 7. Uh, basically just a massively upgraded version of XP, and it was highly functional. And uh, I think there's still a computer here running Windows 7, and I'm thinking, if I were to have this like really rehabbed or something like that, since the sites that I use, I'm never going to get a virus from them. Uh, I don't need Windows support or anything. If I were to lock it down and really like upgrade everything physically there, I keep using Windows 7, I'm wondering if it would be workable. I'm thinking about it. Let's see. Sigil Stone, I want to mention you should take an hour and watch Nile Red on YouTube turn styrofoam into cinnamon candy. It's like watching an actual wizard perform alchemy, some unreal and fascinating shit. Uh, yeah... I have a feeling that I'll uh, skip eating the, sty the cinnamon styrofoam myself. Sounds fun. Next news story, Javier Malay now planning to end, uh, end 70,000 government contractors. This is in the wake of firing 50,000 bureaucrats, public servants, they call them, of course. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily use that particular term. It sort of depends on their function and what bureau they're in. Uh, I'm beginning to really like Javier Malay and thinking, man, Maybe some of his uh, moves could be a blueprint for the United States. The only problem being he can act in a, in a different fashion. In a, in a nation like Argentina, um, the, the, the El Presidente will, will have more latitude if they've got the votes in, in their parliament or Congress or whatever you'd call it uh, to do things. Whereas in the United States, there's a whole lot of, I mean, the bureaucracy is so strangulating that it's difficult to actually fire anyone. Like, we can't even fire teachers that, uh, you know, all of their students got failed and they don't even know what the fuck they're doing. They end up sitting in the lounge watching TV and getting paid anyway. There have actually been cases of this. I'm not being hyperbolic. We've seen it before. Sort of depends on the state. But uh, because of unions, because of bureaucracy, because of one hand washing the other within government, uh, it can be very difficult. Uh, what we need to do is something similar in the United States. And I'm hoping it also goes back to Brazil. And I'm hoping that they get Bolsonaro back or something along those lines, that it continues to uh, inch its way forward, populism and, and liberty, that is, in places like Italy, in places like Hungary, some of these areas that, like, there's still hope for us. Because there are some parts of the world where, yeah, you basically don't really have hope. Uh, shy of a massive revolution and a civil war that probably kills tens of millions of people, for example, 
China ain't going to, you know, join civilization. Shy of, again, overthrow, which probably would involve Western intrigue anyway, and therefore would be authoritarian. Place like North Korea, are they ever going to have an actual functional country that has leadership that's not autocratic? No, uh, it's just not going to happen. Anyways, with the majority of North Koreans born under a communism, it probably wouldn't matter because they wouldn't have any frame of reference for what liberty entailed. So it would be a little bit difficult as a transition. Argentina, though, is operating from the backdrop of having been a stable, capitalistic, good country with a, with a top tier economy not that many decades ago. It's just that they engaged in more and more welfare state and bureaucratic socialism, and they got ground down by that, and they ran out of other people's money to spend, as Thatcher would say, and now Javier Malay is attempting to reset that system. He's doing it more drastically than what we've seen, for example, with Bolsonaro in Brazil, uh, and, and I think that they're trying to charge him with, with you know, some sort of felony there, actually, There's more persecution, uh, or with Donald Trump. And the United States requires less of a reset. It requires more of a soft reset. Javier Malay correctly deduced that Argentina needs something more drastic than that. Sort of like the dose makes the poison. Uh, it sort of depends on how sick you are, how much you're going to need to take. Malay said, well, we're going to need, you know, 100 milligrams. And Trump said, well, we probably can make do with 50 milligrams. That's basically the long and short of it. He's uh, he succeeded. The economy is stabilizing. He's uh, axing the bureaucracy. Supposedly, by now, they should be in a depression. But did that actually happen? No, it didn't. It's almost like you can actually reinstitute capitalism without collapsing your economy. Billy, sticks. Can we get more sticks wave? Vaporwave sticks content. Yeah, sometime I'll do more music. That pie over there. Nile Red is a rad chemist. He turned gold purple and turned paint thinner into cherry soda. As an engineer that does a lot of polymer chemistry, he's cool as fuck. Yeah, with the right chemicals and shit, you can uh, do almost anything. It's just uh, if somebody like us were to try that, we'd probably poison ourselves. Hosen Kai, why does George Takei hate Trump so much? Yet apparently has no problem with FDR, the guy who put Furious George in a concentration camp. Because he's he's just an ideologue. He's, he's just a, an ideologue. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Sass Master 531. Can you explain why some polls currently have Trump winning a state, but the Dem Senate candidate is leading? Wouldn't Trump carry the candidate? Not necessarily, no. Some people just, uh, they don't give a shit about these uh, under races. And you got to keep in mind, I mean, voting down ballot, you're probably a partisan. There's more nuance when you're an independent voter. For instance, uh, I'm not going to write off voting for a Democrat simply because they've got a D after their name. Nor am I going to necessarily vote for a Republican just because they have an R. I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent voter. So while I support Trump, if I were in Kentucky, am I voting for Mitch McConnell? Absolutely fucking the hell not. I, I'd, I'd rather vote for a rock because it would probably do a better job. Cicero, 1776, taught consumer math to seniors last school year, had students research SBF, waking them up to the craziness of virtue signaling and money laundering. Fwinser Lodig uh, 152. Would you prefer President Trump or President Paul? I think Trump commands more authority on the world stage and would have more influential foreign policy, but Paul might be better domestically. Uh, that's a tough one. I would... Uh, hmm. Well, with Rand Paul, I suspect he would actually do a better job, but I have no reference for that because he's never been president. So I would stick with Trump and then vote for Rand in 28, I suppose. Taco woman, Sandy Ravage, the John Stewart coping from the TDS sufferers has been hilarious. Yes, uh, Tim Pool owning him the other day. Scrody Johnson. Oh, I see why they call him Sean Combs, because he's a groomer. Lol. Next, the Baltimore mayor, Brandon Scott, is complaining about white people again. You know, this happens on a regular basis. Uh, supposedly, the term DEI hire is uh, now a stand-in for the person happens to be black. And so uh, we're racist if we use it. Meanwhile, you're stereotyping a vast bulk of white people at the same time, which normally, under normal circumstances, you would deem such a behavior to be racist. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he has a problem with white people if they disagree with his political views. But he's really doing nothing more than the bidding of the white nimbious liberals and probably doesn't have the intelligence to understand it, hence why he would be a diversity hire. Uh, the reason 
is uh, that uh, you've been lied to for decades and decades. White nimbious liberals come in and say, we're going to fix everything. Just vote for us and we'll give you more welfare. Vote for us and you know we'll give you more job opportunities. Has that actually happened for the inner cities in the United States that repeatedly have voted for the white nimbious liberal? Malcolm X had it fundamentally right. Those are the, those are the, the common enemy of virtually all Americans. Those are the people, I mean, they see you basically as indentured servants. Basically, you be good and I pet you on the head and I give you food or something like that. That's basically the mentality of people like Elizabeth Warren, Hillary, hot sauce in the handbag, Clinton. Again, I've met these people myself. I know what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about even like the, like the rich ones must be even more fat, but I'm just talking about the ones from the middle and upper middle class. That they come from their gated communities and they'll go to UVM. And they'll attend a couple of workshops on, you know, black African tea etiquette or something like that. And then they'll smoke weed and they think that that makes them enlightened. And it's just a big problem. Now, uh, DEI hire is used because DEI is a thing. And people are being hired who are not qualified uh, based on, on their perceived lack of privilege. That's just the way that it is. So they happen to have a vagina. They happen to have a darker skin complexion than, you know, the people at the board meeting, basically. Um, that is happening. It's uh, it's not a racist term at all. You'd have somebody who's hired. I mean, they're white and then they're male, but they, they happen to be gay and they still get hired. Well, I don't think the N-word applies to them. I mean, you can use it. There are plenty of rap songs, both by black and white artists, by the way, that uh, invoke that particular terminology. You should see what Eminem has to say about gay people. And he's woke now, but he gets a pass because of the TDS. Solar Worship 88, thoughts on Federal Reserve and esoteric Nazism. Never studied esoteric Nazism so much. Um, I oppose the uh, Federal Reserve. I happen to think that it's uh, generally a bad idea. Audit the Fed. Latin Hero 1818, any comment on the Fed's rating P. Diddy's place? Um, I don't know whether he's guilty or innocent. In fact, it's not even 100% clear whether he was the target of the specific investigation. Um, just because, you, I mean, if your home is raided, it could be some other occupant that really is, is the perp. So I don't know. Maybe P. Diddy's about to have an R. Kelly moment. Or maybe he's being targeted for some other reason. It's always possible. I mean, you know, supposedly uh, there's systemic targeting of black people. So, you know, we'll just go with that. You know, the mayor of Baltimore might agree with that. P. Diddy. Not a fan myself, but uh, I'm not going to presume somebody's guilt simply because their home was raided. And they've condemned it. They've uh, unequivocally denied any wrongdoing. It's a human trafficking investigation, actually. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that pans out. Sigil Stone, I'm going to send you a link on Twitter after the stream about the Nihau incident. Turns out FDR was completely justified in interning all the Japanese in the U.S. No, absolutely not. And the fact that you might have a couple of spies in the country doesn't really justify such a thing. So libertarian, I could, uh, yeah, I, I could never support that. Music and fiction, no, Mr. Bond, I want you to DEI. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Deanna, the next James Bond will probably be, you know, a black female, I suppose. BW, did you see my rumble rants? Oh, uh, just a sec. Oh, why do you think they promote the interracial relationship agenda so much? I don't know this for sure, but I think in New Salem's Lot, they added white character to be race swapped one's girlfriend. Yeah, they also hate redheads. Like, you'll notice that virtually every redhead in Disney movies, when they remake the movies, they're no longer a redhead. And what do you think of us abstaining from Israel vote? Will this help Biden in November? I don't think there's any help for his particular bid. I'm, I'm pretty hopeful about him losing. Next, we've got irrelevant but entertaining news. RFK Jr.'s VP pick shows his presidential bid for what it is, a vanity project all about him. Mildly disagree. I know that he doesn't think that he can win. That's quite clear. Uh, Nicole Shanahan, a Silicon Valley tech entrepreneur with very deep pockets, serves as a perfect mirror for Kennedy's conspiratorial take on politics and corporations and medicine and America. Now, keep in mind, RFK Jr. is far left. Somehow he found someone further left than him. And uh, I don't believe that this is to help Trump. I don't believe this is just a vanity project. I believe part of it is a cash grift. 
basically, hey, you know, I mean, you've got the deep pocket, so we'll put out these ad campaigns. We'll get a return. And then in the future, you know, if I run for the Senate or something and then you can get a kickback and uh, or we can just embezzle the goddamn money and we'll make millions and millions of dollars. I think RFK Jr. is not even solely politically motivated in this. I'm sure that he would love to win, although you are a Kennedy. So, you know, when you run for the presidency, if they think you have any viability, you might have a little bit of a problem with certain groups in this world. And so that could be personally dangerous. He should do. I mean, he doesn't even need the security service, de uh, uh, secret service detail. It didn't help JFK or RFK much now, did it? It didn't help his dad or his uncle. He probably doesn't even give a fuck. He's just uh, lambasting Biden for withholding that particular security. I'd get my own. I'd get four or five big dudes and I'd say, fucking flank me because you know somebody might take a shot due to my last name. But it's uh, meaningless. His, his run is fundamentally meaningless. The only thing that it does is it tilts a, a small number of votes in Trump's favor. It doesn't have any meaningful impact on the race. And indeed, that's what I predicted would be the case long ago when he first launched an independent run. Some people were convinced that, oh, my God, Trump's done for now because RFK Jr. is going to steal so many votes from me. I said, chillax. That ain't going to happen. And indeed, it didn't happen. The Gen X Gamer, will we have live presidential debates in 2024? I cannot answer that question because the powers that be do not want Biden to debate, but they have to create a plausible scenario in which he can refuse to do so and not take a lot of shit for it. Like basically, so, you know, the Donald Trump is, is under house arrest with an ankle monitor or something. And so Biden will come out and say, well, I'm not going to debate my opponent because I don't want to go to a criminal's home or something like that. Wolf on the Plains, DEI stands for didn't earn it, clank on. Yes, that is indeed the new meme. Scrody Johnson, the Puff did stuff and has been an open secret for a decade. Kind of like the Quincy Jones and Weinstein stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's every possibility that he's guilty, but we're not sure. By the way, we're going to get to our merch partners really quickly here. Since I saw that, uh, I saw Webster's Wares made their super chat. Let me uh, shout everyone out in order first. We have pumpkinfirecrafts.us where you can get bookmarks, you can get amulets, you can get keychains and much more with the Stick, Sex, and Hammer logo, various styles, clank on, etc. 10.2 coming soon, maybe, uh, and lots of good stuff. There are also engraved spoons. I've got a collection of those. We've got biltongusa.com. Yes, Anton can hook you up with the best meat. Use code STICKS at checkout for free shipping. I highly recommend the Carbonasi and the Bison. And also we have a sticks page there where you can get mugs, tumblers, and shirts. We have wickedneedleembroidery.bigcartel.com where you can get hats such as this, by the way. By the way, my autofocus is acting up a little bit. Again, I got to coordinate things. We've got heritageheirloomseedcompany.com where you can get seed survival buckets. And by the way, for the next few days, you can still be entered in to their contest if you buy one of those buckets to get free uh, soaps and things like that. Their soap is incredible. It is excellent. We'll be getting a Styx Hammer branded soap in very soon, by the way. Cedar, clove, and blueberry, my favorite combination. We have websterswares.com slash Styx hyphen wares, where you can get Trump merch, Styx merch. There's all sorts of miscellaneous available there. I will do your shout out uh, additionally for your uh, rumble rant in a moment, by the way. We've got jamandbean.com. That is J-A-M-N-Bean.com. Delicious coffee, delicious uh, teas, actually. The Costa Rica blend, still my favorite. Smells amazing when you open it. And it's nice and fucking smooth. No acidity at all. Like, you're not going to need to sweeten it or anything like that. I like a coffee like that. I hate the stuff that's like rock gut. Like, it's like, okay, it's got caffeine in it, but is it really worth it? Yeah, generally not. And also mtpew.com. That's mtpew.com, where you can get ammunition. They have uh, hand-loaded ammunition from uh, Range Brass, and they also have newly manufactured as well. Various calibers available. We've got BW. Do you think Wokeness is going out still? I hear Nelson Peltz is trying to take over Disney. Wokeness will leave. Authoritarianism, sadly, will not. Webster's Wares. Good morning, clankers from Endicott, Washington, deep behind enemy lines. Free shipping using code STICKS at www.websterswares.com. Trump 24 and STICKS merch available. Hoodies and beanies in Saturday. Yeah, I need to get a STICKS beanie as an homage to Tim. Sigilstone. 
The Nihao incident was after Pearl Harbor. A downed Japanese pilot was down in Hawaii, and two random Japanese Americans that helped him try to escape. They knew what he did and took hostages. Yeah, but that's a couple of individuals. That's not the entire population of people from of Asiatic descent. They did the same thing to Italian Americans, too, to an extent. BW, so Stormfront was right all those years. I don't think that I can, on a YouTube stream, I don't think I can even weigh in on that, really. Uh, Winters Lodig 152. Obama and Clinton fundraising for Biden today. The war machine under Biden is starting to show its face. Can Obama get Biden elected? That's possible. I and mean, we still got months before the election. We have to monitor the polls and everything else. Puzzan Kai, what happened to your video on Nelson Mandela's death back in 2013? That was hilarious. Is that one and others saved somewhere? I had to take down a slurry of videos due to the TOS changes around 2017 or thereabouts including virtually everything about medical topics for over a year. Thanks, YouTube. You know, I would have, what, 50 million additional total views on YouTube if I had been able to keep those videos. Groza. What do you think of Trump selling Bibles? It seems to piss off the liberals. I think it's hilarious. Low-key want to get one for my boomer parents. Um, yeah, if he wants, he can sell whatever he wants, although it is kind of tacky. Yes, Cherney, uh, 98 over there. Yes, uh, FTX founder Bankman Freed sentenced to 25 years in prison with good behavior and time off and stuff like that. He's not going to serve anywhere near that, by the way. So it's not a light sentence, but it's not exactly the biggest sentence that he could have gotten. He was facing up to 50 years. That would have been a death sentence almost. John Ski, Sticks is trafficking veggies and herbs, Homeland Security called. His fertilizer supplier has been caught and is spilling the beans on him. Styx has fled the country. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Aussies Robots, did you see those young TikTokers get whacked in New York City? Should that be a new Trump election commercial? Yeah, that happens all the time in big cities now. And it is. Somebody else got beaten to death with a traffic cone a few days ago, I think. And then the person that attacked him was released. I don't know. There's a lot of weird shit happening right now. Citrus Peppercorn, that guy that runs Red Eagle Politics, said he'd like to do a show with you. He's a numbers guy that does elections. Yeah, I'd go on with Red Eagle again. Absolutely. King of Biltong, good morning from Anton's Meet and Eat. Free shipping for your Biltong using code STICKS on BiltongUSA.com and AntonsUSA.com. Hope you can snack on some of the goodies I sent you before you leave. Hashtag Clank Nation. Yeah, I got a couple of them big sausages in there. I'm going to have to uh, use one as a chorizo substitute, I think. BW, sorry, Sticks. I forgot about YouTube being Soros Tube. Yeah, I've got to be careful what I say there. Now, the final news story. Not necessarily newsworthy, so to speak, but I do want to see people's opinion on this. I watched the movie Titanic many years ago, and it was funny and mimetic almost. Because uh, the 3D version had just come out, right? And it turns out that the new 3D glasses, so not the old ones with the red and the blue, but the new ones that, you know, they're better in every way. Uh, they were made by a Vermont company, actually, first. And I thought that was fascinating. I remember the news story about that long ago. And um, several funny things. Well, we'll talk about the door scene in a moment. But, uh, yeah, first I realized the glasses were made in Vermont, at least they were at that time. They've been probably relocated by now due to taxation and regulation. But it was funny, I was with, uh, you know, my girlfriend at the time. And, uh, you know, during the nudes, kind of nude scene where he's drawing the naked chick, because the 3D glasses worked better, we're we were both craning like this as though you could literally, like, see over the, the sketch pad. And I thought that was funny. And, uh, yeah interesting times but yeah the uh, titanic door prop um probably the most famous prop from the movie <laughs> because of uh, people debating endlessly over it again we'll talk about that in a second sold for seven hundred and eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars it's a fucking door okay i realize that it's an iconic thing from an iconic scene in an iconic movie by the way Overall, you know, the movie was just mediocre. But it, with the 3D glasses on, the effects were actually pretty good. So, I mean, that was nice. I liked watching people fall across the deck, you know, getting impaled by the uh, splintering boards and stuff. That was basically the reason I bothered to see the movie in the first place. I'm not into all the uh, romance bullshit. It's like, yeah, that's not necessarily my forte. 
But as far as the fact of, you know, watching for a grueling hour almost, the ship, you know, slowly crack apart, that was pretty funny. Uh, but um, here's the debate, and most people have heard of it. Could, uh, could the dude have saved himself by floating on the door? The debate got so strenuous that multiple tests have been done actually on this particular prop to see whether it's possible for that to happen. Mythbusters claimed that indeed Jack could have gotten on the door, they could have feasibly survived, you would have had enough flotation and they wouldn't have frozen to death. The creator of the movie, or, or the producer I think, uh, claims otherwise and said, no, 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 it's impossible, there's no way you could do that. And I'm thinking to myself, couldn't you have found another piece of flotsam and just like, you know, been on that one? It was the only door that was floating in the area at the time. I am on team. He should have gotten on the fucking door. And if he wanted to sacrifice himself because he was capsizing the door, then he can always get off and just go fucking drown. That's it's the easiest solution. He never made an attempt, though, in the movie. And it's not that I care that it's really newsworthy or anything like that. But I mean, people love to eternally debate this bullshit. I find the fact that they debate about it even more fascinating. Citrus Peppercorn, Jill Stein just got matching funds from everyone that gave money on their taxes. Interesting. Daniel Keeling, thoughts on Jordan Peterson and have you ever read Berserk? I have not. Um, I like some of Jordan Peterson's content. He's an intellectual fellow. I don't necessarily agree with everything that he says, but you know he's got some good takes like wash your penis. So, Taco Woman, Sandy Ravage. They're also claiming that P. Diddy was up to some kind of Epstein extortion shit involving hidden surveillance with minors. Yeah, well, that would, uh, yeah, that could happen. I mean, it's literally happened before recently. And then you'll never get the list of perpetrators, of course, because it's going to be a who's who of Hollywood sort of thing. He was like, man, that Epstein got rich, and uh, yeah, maybe I should try that, you know? Hey, kid, get into the fucking van. BW, oh yeah, I did that one. Uh, Sigil Stone, hey, Lieutenant, you better take this one. What is it? It's a dock supervisor down at the pier. He says the Titanic has just arrived. Well, better late than never. Oh, God. Yeah, my thoughts on that particular scene, I mean, like, put yourself in the shoes of the dude. You probably don't want to freeze to death and drown. At least try to get on the fucking door. She's already soaking wet anyway, so having one more dip if you capsize it and then just getting her back on there probably ain't going to break the bank. You know, you did just uh, profess undying love for her and shit like that, but then you're like, yeah, you know, we had sex once and fuck it, you know, bye. <laughs> it didn't really, I mean, uh, basically they just wanted to kill him off in the end to have an emotional moment. But I have a feeling that if you had, you know, gone onto the door and then, you know, sort of roll around, you could find another piece of flotsam if there was a problem. Yeah, like a barrel or something like that. Oh, maybe you'll even find some other useful stuff, like a blanket that uh, was wrapped in wax or something, or you know, something made of wool so it's still warm when it's uh, when it's uh, wet. Yeah, there. By the way, the Titanic and also the Lusitania. Uh, still generating conspiracy theories to this day. Some people claim that the iceberg was sent by the Bilderberg group, I guess. Uh, I think that sometimes accidents do genuinely happen. You're going to have a who's who of the rich and famous on a ship that's on its you know, uh, maiden voyage uh, when it happens to be the largest in the world. People are going to want to do that. Too bad they didn't build it properly. They didn't... Uh, seal uh, completely the compartments uh, along the uh, outer hull of the ship that were supposed to absorb water and then block it off from going any further. Unfortunately, they did not build it properly. And so uh, it didn't quite work. It spilled over from one compartment to the other. Didn't help, of course, that the outside edge of the ship was raised from stem to stern almost on that particular side. So you know, it was a difficult issue. By the way, if I remember correctly, only one person from first class died because originally they, I think they were trying to lock off the people from the lower levels to get the rich bitches uh, on board the, uh, the lifeboats that they had. And I think it was a little girl, if I remember correctly, the only uh, first classer that died. Jason Lane, skip my chat. Please go back, Jack. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, send you a DM news tip. Neuralink patient one gave a Q&A. I should probably look into that, yeah. Daniel Keeling, have you ever been to Arkansas? 
Uh, I've been through it on a Greyhound bus, and it looks pretty cool, but no, I've never been been there. Solar Warship 88. Want to move to another state, find a good woman, and buy land. Working for that, but everything is so difficult and expensive nowadays. Send white pill? Yes, just work on one new skill or drop one vice. You'll have potentially more money and more skills and be more saleable to the opposite sex. Or maybe you're a lesbian. I mean, I don't want to uh, presume your gender. You probably get banned for that these days. Heritage Heirloom Seed Company, last few days to get in on our March giveaway. 15 new soap scents will be added by this Sunday. Oh, I'm excited for that. 15 more? Yeah, sign me up. Sigilstone, captain of the, of the Titanic in the movie, King Theoden of Rohan in Lord of the Rings. Same actor. Yes, indeed. He chose to go down with his ship. He's like, ah, fuck this. I'm going to die anyway. Hand me the booze, boy. Cat cans. I did cons, uh, honestly hear that the Hindenburg was a conspiracy because Zeppelins were getting ready to become a very safe, effective, and cheap way to travel, and GM couldn't have that, so they blew it up. It's possible. That one is plausible, that the Hindenburg was sabotaged. Somebody could have taken a shot at it from the ground from a considerable distance or something like that. While it looks like they just... Because they uh, the thing about the Hindenburg, they didn't have access to helium. Uh, they had to use hydrogen because the uh, United States froze helium shipments to Germany uh, because of what was going on. And so they uh, originally, the uh, creator uh, of, of the Zeppelin didn't even want to fly. He's like, well, I mean, I can't use this gas. It's highly explosive. But of course, uh, it was countermanded by the high authorities and uh, had no choice. And uh, so a lot of people died on that. Actually, it's surprising how many survivors there actually were on the Hindenburg. Some of them were, you know, horrendously burned. I think the co-pilot was burned head to toe and died. But I think the main pilot survived, if I remember correctly. Or was, or was it in reverse? One of the two. Yeah, it was strange how many people. There was one uh, dude, he was actually an, an acrobat, actually. And he, uh, if I remember correctly, he jumped out uh, when it was still some distance above the ground. And then he rolled and he actually, he managed to make it. Fascinating. Imagine the luxury, though, that must have been the Hindenburg. I mean, uh, have you seen, like, the Titanic menus? The stuff that was available back then? Jesus. Even well into the 50s and 60s, your air travel, like on an airliner, it would have been posh compared to even first class now. So the closest, the, if you get first class tickets for, like, five grand, you're going to come kind of close to the sort of luxury that you had in economy class 50 years ago. Which, which really, I know it's more efficient, but it is seriously, you know. Everything costs too much days. Learn to discern. Hydrogen is about 100 times safer than people think it is. Yes, supposedly there was a coating on the Hindenburg to prevent any static discharge. And one theory is that there was some damage to it. Another theory was that there was sabotage. There was a bomb or something like that. I mean, they've, they've never figured it out. They had multiple inquests and, and couldn't really figure out exactly what happened. In the end, they just sort of chalked it up to a freak accident. But we're not 100% sure that that's actually what happened. There was at least uh, one group that uh, thought that there was a saboteur aboard, probably a communist or something like that. Boycott Warhammer Plus, PSA, clean your pingas. Ozzy's Robots, I'll be on a month-long Mediterranean seven-country cruise in about a week. For the record, my ship did not iceberg itself. P.S. I'll be live in 90 minutes. Excellent. Daniel Keeling, what do you think of Thomas Sowell, and what are some of your favorite pieces of media? I don't know what you mean by favorite pieces of media. I prefer to make rather than absorb most common uh, content. Thomas Sowell seems like a cool dude. He seems intelligent. Uh, Ryan McDonald, USA, opinion on RK Jr., VP Pickett Shanahan, even more fucking left wing than him. And it is evidence, as the legacy media article suggested, it is evidence he doesn't really take the run seriously. Some liberals are saying, well, that's evidence that he wants to help Trump, which is funny because originally it was supposedly that he wanted to help Joe Biden by taking away union Dem voters, potentially crossing over from Trump. That never materialized. So they changed their conspiracy theory. I have a feeling it's money related. I have a feeling that it's all about the, the moolah. She's loaded. He's got the name, the brand recognition, and then they can get people to invest in a campaign that obviously won't go nowhere, but will get huge headlines. Regardless of what happens in the end, 
whoever loses is going to say that RFK Jr. was the spoiler. Well, that gets him a lot of name recognition and clout now, doesn't it? His Wikipedia article will be about twice as long. That's a good investment. If I were Shanahan, I would unload a few million into that campaign, too. It's a great payoff, potentially. A little bit risky, but yeah, I'll probably pay off. Anyways, I'm going to go offline here. Send no more Super Chats because I've got to, uh, at some point, i got to get a snack and shit like that. i got stuff to do. It is thawing outside, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll putter around, but I don't really feel like it today. I just uh, want to have like a low energy day. Could do some book work. Or I could fucking clean up this office because it looks like shit, you know, but uh, we'll figure it out. I thank you to the nearly 5,000 people that tuned in live. I'm going to try to fine tune uh, my camera a little bit more because it does have a few issues because I, again, I had to update my computer. I had to completely reinstall everything. And so I'm still trying to make it look like the way it did before. Like, I don't like the the new design. Even the, la the latter stage updates for Windows 10 sucked, and Windows 11 takes them and runs with them and is even worse. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to look into that. Fucking hate it. Anyways, that's about all. Peace out.